Why is my hair in the way? Hair in the way. My cat in here? No, she's not. Advice. Did I start off like that? No. The things I would tell my younger self. Best advice I could give to my younger self. What I would tell a younger me. I don't fucking know. I don't know the title of the video, but I do know what I would tell myself if I was younger. And that is to lay off the fucking video games. Lay off the virtual world. And start studying up. Trying to start your own business. Trying to make some money. Because it would be infinitely more rewarding and satisfying and... Respect worthy? Admiration worthy? Within your own life, if anything else. Like if I if I was in, I don't know, year 7, year 8, for example. This is a very long time ago. This is 5, 6 years ago. This is this. It's almost the 7th year coming up. No, not yet. I joined when I was 11. This is 6th year. It's, yeah, 7th year coming up. It's the 6th year. It's been 6 years. Had I spent that time on entrepreneurship, on grinding, on the hustle culture thing, had I found it that early, I would be leagues ahead. I'd be 17, 18, multi-millionaire, living the life that I would just possibly, could only possibly dream of. Now I have to do the grind years now. So, had I knew about everything back then, or I had started my own YouTube channel, or I had just done something productive, it would have snowboarded sky, or sky, uh, not skyboard. It would have snowboarded so goddamn easily, you know what I'm saying? That's the best advice I can give to my younger self. Do something productive, just one thing. Doesn't matter what it is. They have the video games. They have wasting time. Get into fitness. I think it's just general advice that you could give to anyone. Why do you look like 10 shades blacker than you actually are? Oh my god, you're so adorable. You're so adorable. You're adorable. And they say black cats are bad luck, but you're so cute. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Get in fitness, start losing weight. I was a fat fuck when I was in year 7. I was a bit of a fatty. I was cute. But I also look like the kid from Up, you know, that little Asian kid. So, um, it wasn't the most positive experience. I remember getting bullied a bit. It didn't get as bad until mid term of year seven, where these kids excused me of, I don't know, some stupid shit. And then I ended up getting ganged up on year seven. <sighs> Good memories. I think that moment I led on, like, if you know that fight or flight or was it or or, or fawn response? I ended up trying to run away f uh, flight. Then I ended up trying to fawn, where he's like, "You be super nice to the guys bullying you." And then at some point, like now, I just like pretty much last year, I decided that I was just tired of being weak. I looked in the mirror every single day and I looked at myself with contempt, and I was very very tired at the idea of just being weak and being helpless and being a pussy. And I was just I was completely done with it. So I changed myself, learned martial arts, and it's it's been it's been a, been a different experience, you know? It's been a very different experience. To go back in time though, I remember there was this one kid who fought off he was like some Thai boy or some Indian kid. I don't remember exactly. But this kid could fucking fight. Like some twelve kids started gang up gang up with this one kid. Like it's like some viral video now. But like those moments are the one the moments that really carve out your identity. I, I think it's my age or a bit older than me. Those moments are the moments that carve out your identity in which you stand up for yourself when you're young. So you're used to standing for yourself. You're used to being a man. You know what I'm saying? But if you do it later on, or if you didn't even do it at all, a lot of guys who are geeks that are bullied, they don't really go from, how do I say this? Go from geek to Chad or geek to 
improving they don't really hop on that self improvement some of them just stay geeks and they become mediocre geeks in their entire lives and they just live horribly dissatisfied unsatisfying dissatisfying lives and honestly i looked in the mirror one time and i was just fat as fuck fat as fuck guys <laughs> i was fat <laughs> and i was just so i remember being so dissatisfied with my life so far as, it, as i uh, played it out i just needed a change and it, you know, I was dissatisfied with my education at the moment. I felt I was learning bullshit. I was just bored in class. What I did was, I remember I was just distracting class. There was a girl I wanted to talk to, but I didn't know. She wasn't on my table. So I had like a, I was in my science class. I had like a table here. I had my, my other Asian friend, but he was a Vietnamese friend. I actually, in college, I was getting to my social flow state a lot. Year 11 was when I started really trying to branch out to my social flow state, trying to like experiment with shit. But people always still saw me as the fucking geek, so it was like, hard. Only in college where I could give everyone like a fresh new first impression of myself. I started making a bunch of friends, talking to girls, getting laid. I was, um, I remember this Vietnamese kid, the way I approached him, he was like, I was like, yo, yo, and I couldn't buy his name, because I, I just saw him on the register, I was like, oh shit, this kid's Vietnamese like me. What the fuck? <laughs> and why is this so, and then suddenly, I went from zero Vietnamese to like 11 in my year, and I just, I remember it was like, shit, I'm around my people. But I wasn't really around my people. And I realized from then on, it's not really about uh, race. It's about culture. And it's not really about uh, the, skin, the color of your skin. It's about your personality. It's just kind of cringe to say, but... <laughs> it's kind of cringe to say, but it's true. I had nothing really in common with these guys, even though they were, you know, the same in this as me. I'm drinking milk, by the way. I mean, my camera, that's a small decision. I had nothing really common with these guys, and they were geeks, they were funny. It was a funny experience, but after a while, I just realized just these guys are boring. They will play video games and shit. Because I'm Discord geeks. And I wanted more from life. I genuinely I wanted to be free. And sitting in a the classroom, they think about a girl that I can't even talk to. It's just bullshit, in my opinion. I just, I'm kind of happy and sad that I didn't get in a relationship at that time. I did sleep with like three girls in college, my first one. After that, I started sleeping with more. I'm remembering my head at the moment. It was, I don't know, it's not necessarily a pleasant memory because I don't remember it as ple pleasant because I think we were just both insecure and didn't know how to make love to each other. It's awkward. It's weird. I look back and I was just, I felt so trapped and insecure and depressed and like I had this incessant need to just fuck girls and just go through that poor phase, you know, PUA phase, where you're just constantly cold approaching, talk, trying to talk to girls. Just, what was it for? I, I, what I long for now is, it's my candle now. No, it's still here. It's very dim. What I long for now is fiscal freedom, financial freedom. I don't really want fast cars. Obviously, one day, if possible, I'd like a Rolls Royce. Um, I do see myself with it, though. I do envision success. I do envision a private jet, a Rolls Royce, my entire family around me. A fun, fulfilling life in which I get to travel. And then maybe a girlfriend or two inside. But it's not at the primary concern I don't know, me and girls like i don't give a fuck there's always cute girls around there's always going to be an abundance of girls you just aren't looking or you're just in a space where you're just trapped constantly because if you're in london bro go to central london there's plenty of cute girls out there are plenty of young 20 25 well i'm not even 20 yet but you know that's my, my point 20 is still considered young 25 is considered young so a bunch of cute and there's a hair in my fucking my milk, man. Oh, I don't know what to fish out with. Ugh, long day, long day. I can't fish out my finger because I just put cream on my finger. Yeah, fuck it. I did it with my nail. I just wiped. Oh, I didn't. I didn't get it out. I just put it to the middle, man. Ah, oh, woe is me. You're fucking kidding me, bro. Can you see it? 
very faint. Some cool shit, man. My milk. Bro. Do I just drink my milk and then let the hair go in my mouth and then I just spit it out? Now I got it out. Man, this hair is not. Is it my, I think it's my hair. It's not my cat hair. I haven't let my cat out. No, it tastes fine. Fuck it. But, um, I remember that time to be so weird because everything was new and you're putting in a new environment and I gotta travel by train and shit. And just, I, just, I, don't, I don't like it looking back. I don't like it looking back at all. What I want is just true financial freedom. I just do whatever the fuck I want. And whatever fuck I want means. Do something like my passion projects, like manga and my YouTube channels, but I don't do it for the views. I don't do it for a, a thing, trying to monetize attention. I'm not doing it for like, right now, one of my plans is to just like get big on YouTube and do this. Like, I, I really want to become successful on YouTube, but if I had the opportunity to just do it for fun, I would much rather do it for fun instead of doing it for the money. You know, because then I'd be in it really for the long game. And I think I'd have a lot of fun doing it. Building a community, building people, making merch. But not because I want to monetize the merch, because I genuinely like making clothes. And then, you know, dealing with the distribution shit. Everyone will be, everything will be fun. I find it fun to make money, but I think that the stress from making money is the issue. You know, it's like, um, I, I, I can do the best analogy, like... What you, Okay, give a very morbid analogy. <laughs> Not morbid, but like, how do I say this? If you're, if you're horny and you're about to jerk off, that feeling is much more intense than actually ejaculation and actually coming. You know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> I'm bugging, bro. Nah, but like, nah, nah, nah. I'm not. Bu <laughs> the fact I'm speaking on camera means I'm bugging, but like, I don't mean it in that sense. I mean it in the sense that. The feeling in which you feel before you jerk off, the intense tension and horniness you feel, that just desperate, just desperate. When guys get horny, they get desperate. They get very, very desperate. They get very angsty. Is angsty the right word? I don't know. They get very, very down bad. That's, that's why I think. But if you channel that feeling towards something powerful, you could become very, very productive and very, very powerful. I remember, it's like, what's, what's the thing? Edging? What's it called again? I just, I just, uh, thing, I did, I did this accidentally, one time, before I got no fap, but, uh, it's embarrassing, so I was sharing this embarrassing story, <laughs> but I, I watched, um, a video, and then after, I, like, you know, a video of, on, 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 I don't use the hub, I use, um, I just say, hmm, videos, okay, and then I, and then I just kept that burning, desperate desire urge inside of me and i just did work instead of it and i just realized whoa what a productivity increase you know what i'm saying anyways hearkening back to advice from my younger self i don't know how that spiraled i, mean, I guess it's a conversation right it just spirals out of control but just lay off lay off the porn lay off the, the hentai lay off everything lay off everything and focus up on something one one thing productive and you'll be the happiest person in the world because of it it could be fitness, it could be YouTube, ideally it'll be both. It could be entrepreneurship, ideally it will be, be all three. Like I am now, it's just focus upon something that you find incredibly important and ignore everything else. Do not compare because comparison is the killer of all joy. Everyone will look at Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. You either look at these guys or you think they're too out of touch, but then you look at someone who's like the odd 25 year old or the odd 21 year old you see in the news who earns like 10,000 pounds a month. Or twenty thousand pounds a month, and you be like, "Oh, I'm twenty one. I'm twenty two. What am I doing in my life? That kid is twenty one. He's two years younger than me, but he's much richer than me. What am I doing in my life? Oh, I'm a horrible person. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. And then you end up panicking and doing bullshit because of it. But here's the god honest truth: you cannot focus on other people and what they're doing. You can only focus on yourself. You can only focus on your wins. It's very, very the classic out adage: focus on yourself, don't focus on others. But it's completely true. It's pretty completely good advice. Anyway, this is reaching the 15 minute mark, and YouTube won't allow me to post this unless it's, if it's under 15 minutes. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Sayonara, sayonara, sayonara. Don't do it. Bullshit. Goodbye.